If you have watched any kind of Pokemon TCG video on any of the platforms out there, it's inevitable that you've seen a single comment that says, Pokemon is for kids! But is it really? Let's talk about it. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Gym Leaders Podcast, where we talk all things Pokemon TCG. I'm Travis with TCG Funhouse. And I'm ASX with ASX TCG, ready to talk some more Pokemon like we do every week, but a little bit of a different topic. Yep, yep. We're talking about them kids, right? You see that comment down there? Back when the scalpers were hot, that just said, F them kids. You know, you'd see it all the time. <laughs> we're not going that route. But there is this stigma in the Pokemon TCG where there's this massive, like, segment of the population, just random general population, I guess you would say, that just says and thinks that Pokemon cards are for children. They're strictly for children. They're only for children. And that's all they will ever be. I disagree. But... If you go to any place that has videos, right, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram Reels, even posts on Twitter, even Facebook, like Leon Hart has a Facebook, go check out his Facebook and you'll see exactly what I mean. There's always things in that comment section that are just trolling and making fun of whoever posted the video that says, Pokemon is for kids, grow up, like all that sort of stuff. And I completely disagree with that on both a business stance a hobby stance and really just a pure like happiness slash fun stance um but before we get into my side of it asx have you noticed those types of comments and what do you think yeah yeah i've definitely seen those types of comments um before on a lot of other types of videos you know a lot of the content creators but i've also seen it here you know on our uh podcast mm -hmm. here you know uh comments down below uh here and i gotta say you know if uh if you tell me to grow up, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you I did, and I still love Pokemon um, <laughs> I because did. I I absolutely do, you know. And and I think you know back when it you know when it first came out, right back in the 90s, late 90s, um, I think at that point, you know, it it really was for kids. You know, it was really yeah, heavily based around the anime and things like that, heavily based around oh, yeah. the games, um, you know, which tend to go toward more towards the kids. Uh, but as time went on and it got more popular, uh, we all grew up, you know, those kids that collected base set and, you know, the Neo sets and everything, you know, we all grew up and, you know, a lot of us didn't lose that love. And I, I think that, uh, you know, Pokemon is something that's for everybody. You know, it's not just for kids. Um, I agree as you can you. see here 100%. on YouTube, you know, all the Poketubers, you know, not all of them, most of them, you know, are. A good portion. Probably around our age, you a know. Good yeah, portion. yeah. So just look at my analytics, know, dude. My my analytics are <laughs> right. most most people that watch my videos are between the age of twenty five and thirty five. So <laughs> Yep. Same here. Same here. Yeah. So I mean, you know, if, if we're just looking purely at analytics, I mean I I don't think it's, you know, just for kids, purely on that. Because yeah, you're right. Twenty five to thirty five or whatever, you know, the range is there. That's that's the same for me. Um but yeah, yeah, that's kind of my my kind of first thought on it here is you know it's it's definitely not but uh yeah you know well, definitely a couple of different things we could talk about here what, what i like that you said is that you mentioned that it was geared towards children but those children grew up right so right. now that we have grown up money <laughs> right we can go back and we can actually enjoy some of the things that maybe we couldn't as a kid um exactly. and you know you can look across the board and you can say that about everything right Look at yeah. the the seventies where comic books, you know, really ramped up on the scene, and there was a yeah. lot of fans of these comic books. You know, the Spider Mans, the Supermans, the Batman's, yeah. the Wolverines. You know, you can say that those were geared and written towards children back in the seventies and eighties, right? They were picture based. Sure. They were colorful. You know, like right. they were one hundred percent geared towards children's reading or teenager reading, right? But they were definitely not writing those books for 30, 40, 50-year-old men back in the day. And right. look at the MCU now, right? That's probably my best one-to-one -on -one -one comparison is look how big superheroes are now. And it has become, you know, accepted yeah. to enjoy comics, to enjoy superheroes, you know, to be, 
to, to go to that Spider-Man on release night, you know, and, and go with three or four of your buddies or, yeah. you know, even share a fandom with your significant other. And it's become very much more accepted. And that's the pocket that Pokemon falls in for me, you know, like I enjoy the MCU. I enjoy the superheroes and stuff like that. But growing yeah. up in fourth, fifth and sixth grade, Pokemon was where it was at. Like it, that, oh, that's yeah. For like, it's just, it's huge. You know, it was huge back then. It cooled off. I, I, you know, I did leave it right because I did, you know, grow out of it for a little bit. But once you realize you reach a certain age where you realize it's okay to like things and you don't have to worry about what other people think, because trust me, by the time you're, I'm 34, by the time you're 34, your friends are going to be your friends. Your spouse is going to be your spouse, whether you like Pokemon or not. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I understand back when you're 18 to 24 or whatever, like you're still trying to like kind of find out where you fit in or, or impress right. a certain group and, and impress yeah. these certain fa- uh, friends, you know? And right. like, so you, you kind of, you know, Oh no, that's childish. That's for kids. I can't do that. You know? And then you reach right. an age where it's like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't give yep. a shit. I'm going to open up Pokemon cards and my friends can either like be like, Hey, cool, man. I want to open some too. Or be like, what? You like Pokemon cards? Like, that's cool. Like I'm not into it. I'm going to go over here <laughs> and read my comic books that are for grown ups. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So yep, exactly. Like, is, is that where yours is coming from too? Like, is was, were you all about Pokemon in like fifth, sixth grade and all that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nostalgia. I, like, oh my gosh. It, I, I can't believe I did this now, but like just throwing my cards raw right in my pocket, bringing them to recess, tr- doing <laughs> trades on the playground. Yeah, man. Uh, I, I was all about it. My friends were all about it. PSA. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, geez. Come back all like ones and twos probably. Um, but yeah, yeah. It was, you know, very similar story. Right. Um, and I, I think a lot of us have this story where, you know, it was big in our lives for a few years. You know, we kind of grew out of it. And like you said, you know, kind of get to an age where you're like, man, Pokemon was awesome. You know, let me let me take a look. Let, let's see what the scene looks like now. And I mean, that's exactly what I did. I went to YouTube, uh, you know, searched Pokemon opening. Leonhart popped up, of course, uh, started watching him. And, you obviously. know, he got me real excited, you know, obviously. Right. You know, but he got me real excited because here's a dude that's, you know, right around my age, ripping packs, getting super excited about it. And, you know, it, it just brought that excitement rushing back. So I had to run out and buy some packs again. Yeah. So like, uh, and I want to say something too. I know sometimes a lot of the listeners, you know, get this vibe that we don't like these big content creators that, you know, like, oh, you guys just sound like haters or something like, no, that's, that's not the case whatsoever. Like, mm. honestly, dude, I fully respect and appreciate Leon Hart and Real Breaking Nate yeah. and, you know, some of the, the trendsetters, you know, Unlisted Leaf who were not afraid yeah. to bake, break down those barriers of, you know, they were really the forefront of taking those comments. You know, they were on the forefront of taking yeah. those grow up loser, quit playing with Pokemon cards. Oh, 100%. You know what I mean? Um, oh, definitely. So, yeah. So, like, I have massive respect for those guys. I, I do think that some of them have changed as, you know, they sure. grow, as they become, you know, uh, basically pseudo rich and famous over, a, the you know, the Pokemon trading card game. Um, right. sometimes they do change, but if you really sit back and just look at the entire niche as a glance, like they are pace setters and trend setters and they deserve all the love and respect that they have. Now, that being said, there's room for a lot of other people to come in here now, but they really did help the, you know, the thought process of it's okay to like Pokemon, you know, yeah. and watching how they did handle some of the hate and how they did get past all that. Um, you know, they talk about having, you know, the, the videos of depression and all that stuff all the time. And that's probably where some of that stuff comes from is, you know, having those constant comments on their Facebook pages and stuff like that of, you know, grow up kid. And it's like, you know, I'm sure it's hard. I'm sure it, I'm sure it's hard. We have not grown to the port to the point where it's like affecting us. Um, but we, even at a small niche section like us, we still get those comments. And my, my question for the people that leave those comments on a channel that has like 11,000 subscribers like myself, how did you find me to write that comment? Yeah, like right? you, you've, <laughs> you've got to be an avid Pokemon TCG watcher to, to, to find yeah. us 
and leave those comments in our videos. Like, okay, Leonhardt's video might pop up because he gets so many impressions, right? There's right. no way that my video popped up on your homepage without you watching a, book, a bunch of Pokemon TCG videos. Like, exactly. <laughs> anyway, I digress. I, I digress. just really working for you. I don't know. I, yeah, you right? Know, just, secret. <laughs> hey, this this guy watched something about fixing his uh, engine in his car. Let's, let's show him a Pokemon video. He's so manly. <laughs> Check out these shiny cardboards. Look at this shiny cardboards. <laughs> Put your weed whacker down for a second, bro. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this Charizard. <laughs> Oh, so man. I, I'm sure that's exactly how it happened, actually. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I digress, though. <laughs> I digress. Okay, so we're getting a little bit off topic, but getting back to Pokemon being for kids, there's a couple of things that I want to that I want to point out, and it's one, one hundred percent Pokemon is still for kids, but it's not only 100%. for kids. But I right. cannot stress enough how important it is that we get a new generation into the Pokemon TCG. One thing that I am a little concerned about and a little worried about is that is really the domination that adults have had over the Pokemon TCG for the past couple of years. Um, it is a little bothersome that, you know, my 13 year old and my five year old cannot go to the store on a regular basis, look through the Pokemon cards and pick out something that they want. And that can be a little disheartening. That can be a little a bit of a letdown for, or, you know, com get them completely out of the Pokemon game altogether. So yeah. we need to make sure that we are doing our due diligence and, and making sure that children can en enjoy the Pokemon TCG. Like, I, what do you think about getting a, a new generation oh, yeah. into the games? hundred percent. I'm a hundred percent. You know, we're not, we're not going to see, you know, like uh, a 30th anniversary and a 35th and a 40th. Like that's not going to happen if we don't get a new generation in here. Yeah. Um, you know, cause you, you gotta keep, you gotta keep feeding the supply. Right. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely think uh, I'm behind it hundred percent, you know, gotta get, gotta get these products, gotta get the, you know, shows in front of these kids, uh, the games in front of them and everything, uh, to, to really keep it going. Um, that's, you know, what they've been doing over the past, you know, 25 years. And I, I think that, you know, they're definitely going to continue it, um, hopefully in some new exciting ways, but. Uh, yeah, kids uh, getting them into the hobby, 100% is necessary. Yeah, it, it, it's very, very, very important. And, you know, it, it, it leaves this... Pokemon has done a fantastic job at really trying to make both niches happy, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, it's got to be very hard to market both sectors at the same time, you know? Yeah. So I can make an argument that Pikachu is probably probably one of, if not the most recognizable media figure in the world. Yeah. You know, like yeah. if, if you really sit back and think of it, so we already know that Pokemon is the number one multimedia franchise in the entire world. Right now you can yeah. say that's because they do so much, right? That's because they do cards and games and animes and movies and they do all that stuff. Right. But, I mean, that's it doesn't matter. It, it, that's why they're number one, and that's why Pikachu is everywhere. He's part of the Macy's Day Parade. Like, he's part of all these yeah. parades. He's on TV all the time. Anytime you see, you know, big human plushies walking around, whatever, at conventions, there's always Pikachus. Yeah. You know, there's always yeah. a Pikachu there. I mean, you could probably stretch to maybe, like, a Hello Kitty. Maybe a Mario is up there as well. Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse might be Mickey more Mouse. recognizable. Um, yeah. But in terms of, like, sales dollars... Pokemon even beats Mickey Mouse, you know, which which yeah, is insane. That's surprising. That's crazy. So yeah, I mean it's and it, it's it's a really big deal to do that, which is why we get so many Pokemon TCG cards, right? So like now as an adult collector, we sit here and we go, I am so sick of Pikachu. I don't need another <laughs> Pikachu V. We just had another Pikachu V box hit the hit the freaking shelves Friday. Yeah, and I know. when I tell you there was dozens and dozens and dozens of them on the shelf compared to other boxes that we have gotten. You couldn't even see anything else but Pikachu boxes. It was it was insane. Yeah. But that's what I've seen. That's that's them marketing towards the kids, you know? Yeah. And on the exact opposite spectrum, the reason why we keep getting Charizards inside sets are really for the adult collectors because it's money value, because 
every yeah. time they put a Charizard out, the investors are going to come out in the woodworks. The the buyers and sellers and resellers are going to come out of the woodworks. So you're really playing yeah. both hands, right? You're putting all the Pikachu cards in there for all the kids and collectors, and then you're putting all the Charizards in there for the investors, like the grown-up side of it. So, like, what do you think they've done the best in terms of marketing towards both getting new children into it and keeping, you know, the adult sector happy? Yeah. Yeah, so I'd say one of the biggest things that I really, really like, and I have actually not gotten one yet, but I've really been thinking about it recently, is those... Um, what are they called? The Trainer Academy? Oh, Battle yeah. Battle Academy? Yep. The Battle Academies? Yeah. Yeah, where it's almost like a board game, right? They just Gives came out with a new all one. All the rules. Yeah, yeah. The Pikachu, Cinderace. Eevee, and Cinderace, I think. Yep. Um, I would really love the Charizard, Pikachu, and Mewtwo one. I don't know why I never grabbed one. They're everywhere. They're everywhere, uh, bro. And there's there, there's, know, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an exclusive stamped Charizard inside. You need to grab that thing. I know. I know. I need it. I need it. That in Charizard my life. itself will be worth the price of the box in 20 years. Oh, easy. Easy. Yeah. Um, so that that's what I really love, um, seeing products like that coming into the fold here where its aim is to bring people into, you know, playing the game, right? Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, the games and everything, too, uh, you know, aren't – I mean, they're, they are they got to be E for everyone, right? You oh, know, they, yeah. they can't be, like, geared towards adults really at oh, all. God, so I would love an adult game Pokemon of it, game, though. My God, that oh, my would God, be, be so good. so cool. Uh, it would be. Um <laughs> Yeah, so like on the, you know, bringing new people in, that's what I would say. I love that they're doing that, and I hope they do more more things like that. Um, as for the adults, I think you're right with the Charizards, um, and I would go, you know, as far to say the alternate arts as well. Um, absolutely beautiful cards, uh, you know, and I feel like those just have more of an adult feel to them than your, you know, your traditional hollows, V cards, things like that. Yeah. Um, so I, I would say that is probably one of the bigger things, and also... Like UPCs as well. Um, I mean, yes. I don't know how you I know agree. too many kids that are going out there um, and being able to dollar box. <laughs> and that's MSRP. Twenty dollar box. <laughs> that you can't find exactly. <laughs> you know, so products like that as well. You know, definitely on the investor collector adult side of things for sure. I think I would cringe a little bit if I saw like a kid opening up a UPC on YouTube. Just being real. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but at the same token, like it still is kind of meant to be that, you know what I mean? Like there's, there's two sides of the coin, you know, you got it those is. people that argue that, you know, Hey, maybe that kid opening that UPC and getting that, that golden Charizard and that golden Pikachu is going to yeah. be a game changer for them. You know, like I, I remember it back in the day, um, getting, there was an exclusive, I think it was like an exclusive upper deck pack. And it came with a gold plated Michael Jordan card inside. And Ooh. I remember getting one of those and it was literally my prized possession yeah. for years, even though back in the day, I mean, Lord knows how much it's worth now. It's probably worth a crap ton now, but like back then, all you had to do was like buy the the thing. It was like one of those things that was constantly on, oh God, like the home shopping networks, right? Like you, you ever stay up oh, okay. real late? And then, like, just HSN or those different, like, yeah. uh, tele-shows where you would call in and order stuff. There was always yeah. this sports card one that show up, like, once a week or so. And I used to literally stay up, like, past my bedtime and watch it. I thought it was the coolest <laughs> thing. And they were just they were, they were were just hawking sports cards, you know, like, yeah. packs and boxes and exclusives. Like, for somehow they got these, like, HSN exclusive sets of, like, 15... Oh, wow you know, Michael Jordan cards or Ken Griffey Jr. cards or whatever. Um, yeah. And I remember that, like, a, a gold-plated Jordan popped up and I made my mom buy it for me. But I'm I'm sure that, you know, they were, like, knockoffs or, you know, like, just a dime a dozen at the time. <laughs> but it was my, sure. it was my fucking, like, dude, ooh, ooh, that was bad. It was my, <laughs> <laughs> it was my... <laughs> I was just going. It was my prized possession, man. And, you know, I could really see a, you know, 13-year-old, 12-year-old kid getting one of those UPCs for Christmas and getting that gold Charizard inside and just being like, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. If I was a kid and I got a chance to open that, I mean, those, you know, the Pikachu and the Charizard would be my holy grail. Of that's, course. That's how would. you make a fan you know? for life. You know what I mean? Like, that's true. And That's true. so like I, I made a mistake right or early on. So um, everybody who watches my channel knows that I have two kids, right? I got Brady who's, who's 13 and Logan who's five. 
So I made a mistake early on with Brady when we started this channel. And basically the, the rule was every poll was mine. <laughs> you know, every good poll was mine. Even if he opened yeah. it himself out of one of the packs or something like I bought the booster boxes, I bought the packs. Like, like these are my, these are sure. my collection cards. And it almost like drove him away from the hobby because he never got anything out of it. You know, like he had the fun. Yeah. He, he loved being yeah. in the videos. He loved ripping the packs and he loved getting the big hits, but ultimately he knew none of that stuff was going to be in his collection. It was all going to be dad's at the end of the day. So I don't want to yeah. say it, it, it turned him away from the channel because he still wants to be in it all the time. Um, and yeah. and for, unfortunately, um, YouTube keeps flagging every video that he's in as made for children. So because mm. I don't think they can tell that he's 13, right? So the rule is is that if they're they're under the age of 13, that the video is automatically made for children. Oh, which, okay, gotcha. which really sucks because we did so many videos and they're retroactively changing like all of my videos back as made for children. Um, oh, wow. And it, it, it kind of, I mean, it's fine because most of those were done before I was monetized anyway. So like, gotcha. you know, I didn't go back and put monetization on them. Like there's still, you can still go back and watch some of them. I have started to remove them and put them over on my Patreon. So if you want to watch our old unboxing videos, uh, specifically nice. everything all everything from 2019 is already down off of YouTube and they're going up on Patreon one at a time. So if you want to be a part of that, guys, use the use the link in the description, join the Patreon, selfless plug, whatever. Um, <laughs> but that's how you can find your old stuff there. Um, but back to the story, I made sure I did not do that with Logan. So now when Logan gets all of his yeah. packs, I mean, he's got two Charizard V Maxes from Darkness of Blaze in his binder. Now that kid's luck. Dude, I, I just I, it's, it's crazy. insane. It's insane. <laughs> um, now, you, you know, I do make sure that he preserves them. You know, I don't let him run around with that Charizard VMAX unsleeved, <laughs> you know, with, woo, taking it taking in the it bathtub the, You don't with let him. him take it to the playground with yeah. him? <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it's it, I, I let him keep them. So now he has this sense of ownership and this sense of yeah. building a collection at an early age. And I've kind of gone back and changed the way that I that I handle like Brady stuff now. Um, so when yeah. he gets his stuff, he, he gets to keep it now too. And he's actually started a bigger interest in now like starting a sealed collection. So oh, nice. lately he's been spending his money on buying, you know, check lane blisters and three pack blisters. And he's keeping them sealed for a sealed collection, which is really, really cool. Um, nice. He's doing both Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon right now. Um, wow. so I'm, I'm trying to, to, we, you know, reel him back in from like doing that to him. So just be wary of that. Like when you start to get, you know, a child into collecting. <laughs> yeah. I, you, you said something there. It got me thinking a little bit. Now I think is really cool too, about, you know, our generation bringing, you know, new kids into Pokemon, our kids. I don't, I just said new kids cause I don't have kids, new kids, but, you know, new kids, kids on the block <laughs> kids <laughs> into Pokemon, um, Wahlbergs. you know, it's, <laughs> it's different than when we got into it, right? Because we had no idea how to, you know, collect and preserve a and sealed product. Like, I, you know, that was never a thing back then, and it is a thing now, right? So, like, you know, how to keep sealed product, what to keep, all that stuff is, is you know, I think we are able to educate them way more, you know, now uh, than we were back then. And, you know, I think they're better off for that, too. Yeah, well, all there was back then was sports cards, you know? Like Magic yeah. the Gathering started like in the mid '90s, you know what I mean? So yeah. like really before that, when you look at you know '80s, '80s is really kind of like when sports cards took off. Like yes, yeah. there was sports cards in the '70s, but they weren't you know they weren't like massively printed and massively popular like they were in the '80s and in early '90s when you get into the junk wax era. Um, yeah. But you're right, you know, in terms of trading cards, TCGs, right? Trading card games. There was nothing until we had Magic in the mid-90s and then Pokemon in the late 90s and then Yu-Gi-Oh! in the early 2000s, you know? So, yeah, yeah being able to, to pass down our tricks and uh, pass down the collectability information and, hey, this is what we did growing up, you know? And, and being able to share that yeah. with our kids is something that we didn't really get, you know? Like my, exactly. my, my parents never collected trading like sports cards. Like my, you know, it started my, my, yeah. my infatuation with collecting started with sports cards. I was a massive basketball yeah. guy. So when I was a kid, believe it or not, my grandmother 
was the one who gifted us a bunch of sports cards. She was oh. always the collector. My dad, no. Oh, wow. My That's grandpa, so cool. no. My mom, no. Um, it was my grandma. And just like out of the blue one day, she just came She came over and like dropped off like this, this big collector's box of probably late 80s, early 90s sports cards, you know? And that's when I got my first yeah. Michael Jordans and, you know, uh, Scotty Pippins. And it, they were all basketball cards. Dang. And I was like, Grandma coming is, in clutch. Yeah, for real though, right? For real. <laughs> and like, this was really cool. And I remember sitting there with my brother for hours, sitting in the hallway, you know, because his room was across yeah. this way. My room was across this way. And sitting in that hallway and just going through this big box of cards. And of course, he probably took all the good ones. You know, he's probably like, oh, Michael Jordan, that's <laughs> fine. Oh, here, you really want this guy, this uh, no-name player that you'll never see again. This, you know, this, this right. Bill Cartwright. Here you go. This is a great card. <laughs> but I'm going to take this Larry Bird over here. Um, yeah. He's no good. Don't worry. He's, he's a nobody. <laughs> I'll just take him off your hands, you know. Freaking brothers, You're man. not going to. <laughs> but, like, those, those are the things that help bring the new collectors into a generation, right? So definitely yeah. if you're if you're a parent, get your kids into it, man, because there's nothing yeah. better than sharing something with the kids, whether it's you guys just yeah. go buy packs, whether it's you guys, you know, record videos together, unboxing them like me and Brady did. And it really just brought us closer together as as, you know, a, a dad and a son and, and even the whole family and Amanda got into it. It was really, really amazing. Like, do you notice yeah. uh, in your comment sections and stuff where I see comments all the time that are just like, hey, yeah, I started collecting with my son or, um, you know, my chat was real popping the other day on Friday nights where we do our weekly live streams and yeah. multiple people were like, yes. And for some reason, the age was eight. Everybody's eight year old got them back into the Pokemon game. Do you <laughs> notice that those types of comments yeah. on your channel and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while I do. I do. I don't. Again, you know, don't have any kids or anything, so I don't feel like I get it get as on that, much. Bro. You know, it's just not. It's not well, you know. It, I am getting up there, uh, but getting uh, old, man. Yeah, uh, I know it's going to be my thirtieth here coming up. In uh, you got some, you got some grays in that weekend, beard right so. there. Am I seeing some grays in I, there? Maybe I don't know. I gotta, I gotta check the mirror out after this. Um, but yeah, um, I, I totally lost my train of thought. To be honest with you, kids, we comment section, topic. families. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, I, I, I've seen it on my channel every once in a while. I don't see it as often as I think you probably see it on yours. But, you know, more or less people, you know, just telling me, like, you know, been watching videos on here, been, you know, watching Nate and Lee and Hart and, yeah. uh, you know, Unlisted Leaf, got back into it, you know, saw your channel because you popped up on my homepage because YouTube is just suggesting all your videos to me. <laughs> Thank you, YouTube, by the way. Um, you know, so, yeah, I do get those every <laughs> once in a while. And it's really cool. You know, it's really cool to, you know, hear that from people like Ugh. excited to get back into it, you know, because it just, you know, kind of reassures me that this the whole thing that we're talking about today, you know, that it's 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 not just for kids. It's for anybody who wants to, you know, love Pokemon. You're welcome, you know, in in the community here. What's your first memory of the Pokemon TCG? Oh, man, there's so many. Um, I would have to say probably my the memories that I remember the most are honestly like watching the anime before school, okay. like every morning sitting there, eating my bowl of cereal, like forcing my mom to turn off whatever she was watching because Pokemon was on and I had to watch it. And I always lied telling her that I didn't see that episode before. So I had to see it. <laughs> even if it was like the fifth time I had seen it because it was Pokemon. I love Pokemon. Um, you know, so I'd have to say like, those are probably my strongest memories. Just, you know, I have watched, you know, the, the whole, you know, Canto season probably oh, yeah. four or five times. Indigo through. League. Uh, the whole Indigo League and the Orange League, too, or the Orange Islands or whatever came right after that. And, uh, yeah, I, I would say that's that's probably my strongest memories. But I have a lot of other memories of, you know, like trading with friends on the playground, uh, going over to their house, bringing my whole entire collection with me, my couple binders that I had, you know, so we could do trades. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it was honestly what really got me into it was probably the anime. Um, I just, I really loved yeah. the show. Um, you know, and once I found out that there was like this whole game, you know, the whole card game with it, you know, I got really excited about that too. Uh, Charizard, of course, wanted to pull the Charizard, the Blastoise, the Venusaur, which thinking about it, I don't think I ever did, which is really sad. Not, none uh, of them? <laughs> I don't think I pulled any of them, no. Um, you know, keep in mind, this was what, you know, 25 years ago or so. So I didn't have my own income. 
you know, to buy all the cards. You weren't working so yet was, at the age of seven, eight, man. Come on. I, you know, I, I had a pretty plush life. I didn't have to work at seven. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah, as much as I could beg my parents to buy me another pack, actually hold the phone, Uh-oh. hold the phone. Memories are uh, kicking in. You, did you, a, a did, I, I literally, I literally saw the point where you were talking and then a memory hits you and you were like, it clicked. Ching! no, I got to talk about this. So, <laughs> all right, this, this is my most favorite memory of, of, um, collecting cards growing up. So okay. I was out at the store. Uh, with my mom, I believe we were at a Target. It was either a Target or Walmart, one of the two. And um, we, I don't know how, I probably just begged to go over to the toy section. Um, so we found our way over there. And at the time, um, that's where like the Walmarts and Targets had all the Pokemon cards around me. They didn't really have a, a front you know, card section like they do now. Yeah. Um, so walking through uh, that night, it was you know pretty late and had a long day. I, all I wanted was a couple packs of Pokemon cards to open. Like That's all I wanted. Um, and walking through the aisles, I couldn't find anything at all. Mostly back then, it was really just like single packs and stuff. We didn't have all these other cool products and stuff that we True. have now. So True. I couldn't find anything in the main section. Starter and decks and just, packs. That was it. That was it. Right. I, I probably did find some starter decks and we're just like, eh, I already got a couple of those. Yep. I don't need those. Yep. Um, but anyways, ended up finding one single pack and it was Team Rocket nice. and uh, bought it and ended up pulling the hollow dark Charizard on the way home, probably almost made my mom run off the road because <laughs> I screamed so loud and I pulled it. And I remember like going through the pack and I, it was dark out. So I had to like switch the card. Like when there was a, uh, yep, a yep, yep, going yep, yep. Oh God. So Kid like, memories, and bro. And I, I remember like flipping to that Charizard and like letting like three or four lights go by. Cause I, I had to like double just check, keep looking Triple at it. Check. Like this isn't real. This isn't real. But yeah, that that has to be my favorite so my cool. favorite memory of, of all. So I did pull the dark Charizard. I never pulled the base set. Um and sadly my whole entire collection was lost over Most the years. So I do not have that anymore. But that that, that was a, a very nice memory that I have. The amount the amount of people that still have their old collection is like almost none. You know, yeah. if if there's a if there's a travesty that has happened in the world that nobody talks about. It is the amount oh of Pokemon cards that boomers have thrown away. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> or yes. just given away. Like that's yep. the biggest travesty in the entire world that nobody talks about ever is the amount of Pokemon cards that were thrown away by unknowing parents and grandparents. Oh my gosh. That's exactly what happened. Man, I'll Dad tell moved you what. out of his house. No so, more cards. <laughs> what I love about this conversation is you don't even realize it, but we're talking about both sides of the coin simultaneously, right? Yeah. Your story is the exact reason why Pokemon is made for both sectors. It's made for children, so that way you can so that way Pokemon can create the memories that we talk about. And then it's yeah. also made for adults so we can re relive our happy times and relive, you know, what it was like yeah. to be a kid and just bringing back all the feels and nostalgia, you know, and it's different for every generation. And for our generation, it's Pokemon cards and Yu-Gi-Oh cards and that sort of thing. Right. And like, yeah, I remember WWE was really big back then. So now like wrestling yeah. is also like a real nostalgic thing. AEW yeah. is getting a lot of our, generation back into wrestling because it's very similar yeah. to that attitude era wrestling from the late nineties, which is completely yeah. different from what WWE is nowadays. Like it's almost unwatchable in my opinion. I know people that yeah. like it, but like those are the areas that are really bringing our generation back. And we are all finally reaching that level of accepting that it's okay to still watch wrestling. It's okay to collect Pokemon cards. And if it still isn't, Blame it on the kids, man. My eight-year-old got me into this, bro. My 10-year-old <laughs> got me into this. I only watch wrestling because my 13-year-old loves it. I, You know, that's a lie. There but you, go. you can fall back on it, <laughs> you know? Yeah, there you go. You can fall back on it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and the last part of this conversation, I want to talk about business-wise, right? So the another reason why the Pokemon TCG is 100% made for adults nowadays is the business side of it. Pokemon is such a more lucrative business today than they were. Okay, let me let me rephrase that. 
Pokemon Company International, the 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 company that creates the Pokemon cards, not necessarily you know yeah. not necessarily Game Freak, right? Right. Pokemon Company International is so much more lucrative today than they were even three years ago before this massive adult boom in the Pokemon TCG. And as a business, that's your goal. Your goal yeah. is to make the most profitable business that you possibly can. Yeah. And a lot of people have these issues and they're and they're, hey, you know, they're they're doing a lot of things that I don't agree with because they're they're being money hungry. They're just trying to get our money. They're trying to do this, that, and the other thing. And it's kind of what businesses are for, right? Like like the good old ASX, yeah. you know, saying slap a Charizard on it. You slap a Charizard on it because you want to make more money as a company. You know? Oh yeah. You you create the UPC because you want to make more money as a company and you control and you help you know put product out into this third party market which yes now there's these third party people making profits off of it but it doesn't matter to the pokemon company because they just want to make sure that they are selling out so like as bad as it is to say something like this and they may not admit it but the pokemon company international loves what's been happening in the last two years they love it Oh, how could they not? Because they're selling every single freaking product that comes off of their factory belts. Everything. Yep. Everything is gone within days, which makes the retailers happy, which makes the, the contracts bigger, which makes the relationships better. And even though, you know, the, the collector portion of the kids portion might be struggling to get their hands on product or, or, or the game players, you know, the yeah. company is happy. The company's happy, yeah. and they're going to continue to do what the adults like so they can continue to grow their business. Like, what are your thoughts on that side of it? Yeah, I, I mean, I, th I think you said it all, really. You know, that, that they are a business. Do you think and it's making... wrong, though? I mean, no, not really, to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, if we want Pokemon cards and Pokemon games and movies and all this stuff five, ten years from now, I mean... This is the kind of stuff that they have to do, right? You know, so as a business to to stay afloat. So no, I I mean I don't think you know that that they're doing anything wrong, you know, by any means. I I do still, you know, think that they're doing a lot of things and they're starting to do a lot of things that are you know trying to bring the kids back in. Um, I agree. You know, from from the super vibrant colors to you know that the um, battle academy that I talked about earlier. You yep. know, so still making um, anime. Yeah, I, still making all these still other things. Making the anime video games. Yeah, yeah. Which I heard that they're talking about possibly not having Ash as the main character. I heard anymore, that. Which I think I don't that needs to happen. About. No, that needs to happen. That needs to happen. <laughs> it, it, I'm just dude, a hater. If you if you hater. want my full opinion on it, <laughs> uh, Ash never even should have went to. Okay, I'll give him the Johto League because yeah. you know because uh, Gold and Silver and and Red and Blue are they are kind of attached as games. You know what I mean? Like even yeah. though it's Generation yeah. One and Generation Two. The fact that you can go back to Kanto after completing your Johto journey, like they're kind yeah. of together. So I'm yeah. okay with him doing the Kanto thing and then also him doing the Johto thing. But Sinnoh, uh, what's the third? It's, what's the third generation? Dang it. Um, but, you know, oh, the, the Ruby Sapphire games, 1,000% yeah. should have been a different protagonist. 1,000%. Yeah. They, they, they really yeah, I, should have I, broke that down. They really, I mean... The hard part is now you got to take Pikachu away as the starter. And now you're losing that market marketability. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess you could find a way for the protagonist of every story, every uh, generation to Always Hoenn. By the way, it's Hoenn. Um, Hoenn to, okay. to find a Pikachu really early on. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you could play yeah. that or that origin story for them every single time. Um, or you could just find other ways to incorporate Pikachu. Maybe his his companion partner. Uh, has a Pikachu or something like that, you know? Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, in my opinion, every generation should have a different protagonist, even just for diversity, you know? Like, make yeah. make, make the Hoenn leader a girl, you know, and bring more girls into the into it. Um, yeah. You know, make make the, you know, the, the protagonist a, a different ethnicity and just spread the yeah. love, spread the joy all the way around and bring more people in than just Ash Ketchum. Because the one thing... As an adult now, again, the one thing as an adult that I still can't accept is that Ash is still 13 years old. 
It's just, there's no way yeah. that after 25 years of making TV shows, Ash Ketchum is still 13 years old. Right. He's got like a, a Simpsons-like complex going on yeah. with him where he just never never grows up, right? Yeah, I, I was a little bit bummed, honestly, when I came back into uh, Pokemon and, and the whole world here uh, to see that it was still Ash, to be honest with you. Uh, I was... I, I guess I was more surprised that there wasn't a new protagonist at this point. Yeah, it's really um, weird. It's really yeah, weird. And Considering I mean, we have, the way the show progresses, it makes yeah. zero sense for for because right? accor- according to, according time. to Pokemon, in one year, Ash has done so much. <laughs> it, it, yeah, right. This is like insane. I, like I don't even know. Like. Not even possible, right? And yeah. it doesn't even that that doesn't make sense. It, right? That's it's, the problem. Like, it doesn't make it, sense, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I definitely think a, a new protagonist is, uh, you know, it, it's going to hurt a little bit, right? Because I'm a I'm a Kanto kid at heart, and <laughs> we you know, it's are. just the nostalgia. But uh, yeah, I don't I don't think that would be too too bad of an idea for sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, def- definitely long overdue for sure. But it yeah. does make me wonder: Are they still going to find a way to incorporate Pikachu? into the show because that could be a massive loss that could be a massive loss for them but the one theory that i would have is if they are going to give us a new antagonist i can almost guarantee you the partner pokemon is going to be eevee i I can can almost guarantee you yeah if i if i were in charge of a generation nine anime i would make the main protagonist a, a, a girl a 13 year old girl and i would make her an eevee trainer 1000%. One thousand cool. percent, and I wouldn't yeah. even make the EV evolve into anything. It would just, just like the original anime, like she would be an EV trainer through and through. And of course, you would explore all these journeys with all the different evolutions, right? Like maybe Umbreon will yeah. help her out once, and then Jolty on the next day, right? Like they'll just come yeah. in uh, and do it that way. Because if you if you've been paying attention, I've been saying this for a very very long time. They're really pushing Eevee as a pseudo mascot, and they're really oh, yeah. gearing Eevee towards, and they always have towards the younger girl spectrum. Um, I forget the trainer that is the Eevee. Who's the Eevee trainer? There's a girl Eevee trainer in one of the shows. I don't remember I which one. Yeah, but I can't remember either. Um, and it's massive. It's a massive ordeal, and it's time for them to really yeah. take that next step and to take that bigger step and bringing it full circle with Eevee. And putting it on the same level as Pikachu, in in my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I think you're totally right with the Eevee. Um, you know, and even thinking, too, if they did go down the route of actually evolving that Eevee, I've heard some talks about potentially a new Eeveelution coming in Generation 9 rumors. as well. What do you, what do you uh, think you know, the so typing would be if we get a new Eeveelution? I would say, I mean, we don't have any Dragon type. So that that's I know that's what's being speculated pretty hard. Yeah. Um. What other typings do we have? Fighting type. We got right? quite a There's few. No fighting type, type would be great. Fighting type would be great. And, and it would make cool. it more balanced as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I I think. I think probably the fighting has more of a chance just because with dragon, I mean they dragon too, and fairy yeah. they like take them in they you know they pull them out they put them in they pull them out all the time so yeah. I think fighting probably makes the most sense. I, I would go back to Kanto and I would do three. I would do that three. Would be cool. I would just I would just you know that that would be so like after going since I think Generation Six was the last time we got an evolution with Sylveon. So we did yeah. Sun and Moon. We did Sword and Shield with no evolution. Instead of just giving us one, with all of these unused um, typings, you know, for Eevee and the evolutions already. I would just pop off three because obviously they're not doing this thing where they give us one and give us one. So they gave us three, then two, then two, then one. So it's like, okay, are they just going to give us one now after five years since the last one? Yeah. I would do three and I would go, I would go for a fighting type. Obviously I think would be the best one. And what do you think about like maybe making the fighting type EV like stand up on its hind legs all the time? Like that would be that'd be kind of cool, uh, like almost that would be interesting. Almost like uh, like uh, you know who's that fighter from Tekken style? Like that would be cool where he spins all wow. the time. Um, yeah, the cop the capoeira person. Like that'd be kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Like a, like a capoeira uh, EV fighting type. That would be kind of cool. Um, right. I would go steel type. 
I would go with yeah. um, just like a metal coat evolution style, you know, and just give it armor. Like in e- like an EV That'd be pretty cool. and just basically just an EV wearing armor would be absolutely amazing. Um, and then, yeah, I'd probably fall off. Uh, no, you know what? I wouldn't. I'd go poison. I'd go poison type EV. Um, find a okay. way to uh, to make it work without making it like so gross, you know, like a muck style. Um, yeah. Find a way to just kind of make it like a skunk almost, you know, and secrete smells okay. and, and goo and stuff. Um, I would stay away from dragon personally. Because in my eyes, if something's going to have a dragon type, it's it's a special thing, you know? Yeah. Like, I think dragon yeah. type is special almost always for pseudo-legendaries. I think they kind of ruined it when they did, like, the flapple with with a dragon type. I'm like, can you not? Oh, my God. Don't like, even start with that. Can you not that? do it's, that as a dragon? Like makes no sense to me. <laughs> none. But, yeah, that's what I would do. I would do uh, a steel type. Wearing armor, a fighting type because it's just natural uh, trans, you know, progression, um, and then I would go for a poison type just because it would kind of even out the typings at that point. Yeah, or they just threw a curveball at us and was like, "No, we're gonna do a normal type evolution, and we just have an evolved normal looking, just Eevee. a larger Eevee." <laughs> exactly. I'd be so pissed. Um, this is what we waited for. <laughs> or they could go real dark and make a ghost type EV, but then you like have to kill your EV to make it a ghost type. <laughs> oh man! Hashtag dark. I mean, they they could. <laughs> that's that's very dark. They'd have to come up with some sort of like special stone or something like a ghost. You, stone. you gotta you gotta do you gotta use the tombstone to change oh, your EV to the a ghost pizza? type. The tombstone pizza yeah, is stone? a pizza exactly. <laughs> the frozen pepperoni tombstone. <laughs> Oh man! All right. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about, um, and that is, what would something that I would love to see as an adult, right? Because you know the whole the whole point of this episode is to kind of talk about where there's a niche for both kids and grown ups. Do you yeah. think? And what would your I you know ideology be behind an adult Pokemon live action movie? Yeah, I mean, now we can I, go PG thirteen. I don't want to say R. I don't want to go straight sure. R. That's a little bit deep. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. you know, TV MA Pokemon. Um, but PG thirteen, not necessarily like oh my gosh, a cartoon or even Detective Pikachu was like really toned down. But like, yeah. what about just like a like a almost pushing it to R grown up movie? Yeah, you know, I would love to see like. You know, I, I maybe you mentioned this, but almost like a like a live action series, right? Is that what you said? Versus yeah, a live movie? action. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a series yeah, or so a movie. Like, I like series. They're actually coming out with a live action series. I think they, I think they've yeah. uh, announced it. Oh, awesome! Yeah. So, yeah, I would definitely love to see a series. I, I like watching things as the series. You know, like an hour, forty five minutes, or whatever each week. Um, so I would love yeah. it to be like that. Uh, I would love it to be really based around the battles and getting getting to see those um you know a little bit more in depth maybe not as uh you know maybe the battles are a little bit more raw looking right. you know we we really see and i don't mean to say this to be mean but you know we really see the pokemon kind of get you know roughed up a little bit yeah exactly Scratches, yeah you bleeding, know like, uh, ru- yeah bruising yeah Exactly. Like they're not just, you know, sitting there with like squigglies on their eyes after a solar beam or something like that, you know, like they're <laughs> blown through the wall and in the next building or something, you know. So, you know, some I guess some more some, maybe some more this raw. is weird, but some more realness around yeah, it, I realistic, guess. Realistic raw. Terms of like yeah. Yeah, like the physics and all that. Yeah, a little bit more raw. It's not uh, weird. I think it's it, not weird at all, I don't think. Yeah. I don't think it's weird well, to ask for something a little more, you know, with a little more gumption to it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think that uh, they're on the right track with with what I saw in Detective Pikachu. I thought I that was an awesome movie. I loved um, it. It was just so cool to see the Pokemon like, you know, rendered like that in like a nice like three D kind of an- animated type or not animated like we're normally seeing them. Yeah. Um, CGI. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, so I think that was super cool. Um, you know, and if they put it out now, I mean, this the CGI I would assume would look even better, Probably. right? Probably. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I think, yeah, I think they could just do some really awesome, awesome stuff yeah. uh, with that. What would your topic um, be? Man, it's it's hard to like stray away from like the normal story that we've always had, right? Well, okay, would you um, would you recreate a story or would you create a whole new one? 
not recreate, would, but would you like make yeah. you take take a section of time, you know, in the Pokemon TCG, and would you make a movie based on that, or would you create something, you know, completely new? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I think I, I think I would like to do it on like a section of time because I really got like interested in like the story of like the legends of Arceus and it being like way back in time. Right. And I like a lot of those movies that kind of, especially like if we've had, you know, a couple movies or something in the series and then we get like the prequel that kind of brings us back in time and stuff like that. I really do like that. And I would love to know more, you know, about yeah. the kind of history, right. Of, of Pokemon. And I, I think we got a taste of it with Arceus, um, you know, and all the, you know, different things that came with that game. But I think if they made that into a show, um, I think that would be absolutely amazing. I would something I would love to watch for sure. Yeah, I would go I would go both routes. Right. So first thing that I would I'll, I'll give you like one thought of each. Right. And on one hand, yeah. I would if I were to create um, a, a realistic, more grown up version of Pokemon based on an already existing story, I would probably go with um, like Groudon, Kyogre, and Rayquaza. I would probably go that story arc with like the first Mega Evolution cool. and the way that they battle. And I would probably find a way to incorporate like a team in there, like go similar, you know, Magma and Aqua. Even though I, even though I know they're two like different timelines, like you know, the sure. this happened here and this happened here. Um, I would kind of put them together and I would do a story arc based on that. So that way we got the legendaries. We got. You know the the earth shattering moment where you know hey we we can we could lose our entire planet if we don't stop yeah. this and then you know Rayquaza can perform the first mega evolution and all that and we can really watch these things battle it out and you can watch a hero go through it and stuff like that yeah, that would be, be awesome. that would be a really cool you know reoccurring series and then like season two you know you can go back and relive Palkia de Alga and Arceus and stuff like that. Um, other than that, though, I would love to see um, like spinoff series as well, right? So you can do yeah. you can do like a main series, you know, kind of like the MCU has their main series, and then they kind of got these spinoff shows. Um, yeah, and kind of like what they're doing with Game of Thrones. You know, we had the Game of Thrones series. Now we're getting the House of Dragon coming out, which is going to be freaking phenomenal. I cannot wait for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you get that main series line going uh, yeah. where you can talk about all those things. And then I would love to have spinoff, almost like single limited series, right? Like a yeah. two or three episode uh, mini series, or even just like a one episode, you know, hitter where yeah. you can really make it all about one situation, right? I would love to get yeah. like a dark rye for Halloween, like a, like a limited three episode series where dark rye cool. is out of control eating people's dreams and put leaving yeah. them in insane asylums and, and that kind of thing. And just making people go mad until, you know, they find a way to get dark ride back under control. Um, I would love a series. That just sounds awesome. Uh, dude, right. That would be my favorite Halloween time dude, movie for sure. Absolutely. Like that, just, that sounds amazing. Okay, like, can we get the screenplay like written up and everything? And I'll do it, get bro. This thing going? I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> um, and then like another spinoff series of, you know, the Mewtwo story arc, you know, where we get the yeah. full in depth, you know, Mewtwo being created from the ground floor. Like, I know we've seen it so many times. I think there's two movies that talk about Mewtwo's, um, you know, origin and even Detective Pikachu touches on it as well. But yeah. we I mean, there's so much around that so much around Mewtwo that could get you know dived into divin into oh you yeah know, driven into even more right one of those um, oh yeah and then you can work that yeah, into I would a love spinoff a super of, in-depth, of like, you, you how know? he was made yeah yeah let's like like detail like everything detailed like just super yeah. super detailed about it grown-up style grown-up version have a villain you know have all this stuff and it would just mm. be really really cool to me and i would i would love a more uh adult grown-up version of that where you don't have to explain everything that's on your screen so a child can understand you know that was one of my favorite things about game of thrones that, <laughs> that that was literally my favorite thing about game of thrones is they did not explain the scenes to you you just no. kind of worked them out by yourself as an intelligent viewer and they treated right. you like an intelligent viewer and i would love something like that for pokemon 2 where it wasn't just like 
here's my champ. He's doing this because of this. Why? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So just to break it exactly. down. Exactly. But I'm not saying there's no room for that, but there is some room for some more grown up television stuff. Oh, definitely. And even games. I wouldn't mind a more grown up game. You know, hopefully Generation cool. 9 can be a little bit harder, more open world, you know, not necessarily yeah. Elden Ring difficult, but, you know, I snooze through brilliant, uh, brilliant, uh, pff, 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 shiny Shield? pearl, no, shiny pearl and um, brilliant diamond, literally snooze through them. I could beat that game yeah. sleeping. Um, but yeah, so that's it guys. That's all we have for today's episode. Let us know what you think in the comment section. If you're watching here on YouTube is Pokemon made for kids. Is it made for grownups or is it just made for everybody, guys? Let us know. We love chatting with you guys down there. Make sure you go check out ASXTCG's channel here on YouTube as well. We'll also be in the link in the description. Once again, the most underrated Pokemon TCG content creator on YouTube. Um, join us every single Friday here on TCG Funhouse. Live stream box breaks, guys. I got some Battle Region. I got Starbirth. I got all these different packs. I just added shining fates to the hall i just added celebrations Ooh, nice. there's i think there's like 10 or 12 different packs i have up everything from chilling rain to brilliant stars to celebrations guys phenomenal different japanese stuff come join us every single friday revolving door you can buy into the break at tcgfunhouse.com but asx you know before we get out of here you gotta say one last thing my dude Oh, yeah. A little bit of an announcement, guys. Um, this weekend on Sunday, I'm going to be doing my very first live. It's a birthday celebration live. It's Ooh. my 30th birthday. And I would love if you guys could all be there. You're getting I old, will bro. be opening up at least one of these Brilliant Stars booster boxes. If enough people show up, I'll crack into a second one. Ooh. So we got two Brilliant Stars booster boxes that, uh, I mean, are going to get cracked at some point, but possibly both of them. That's awesome. On that night, definitely one of them. It's going to be awesome. We're going to pull Charizards and Gold Arceuses, and it's going to be great. So I hope you guys can all make hope it. I'll do. Uh, probably be doing it like 7 o'clock Central on Sunday, okay. maybe 6. Uh, so turn those notification bells on. That's right, guys. That's right. It's going to be a heck of a time and so much fun. While you're here, guys, if you're new, drop a sub. Here on the Funhouse Crew, we post Pokemon content three times per week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 2 p.m. EST. Smash that like button. It really helps put it out there. And if you're listening on the audio platforms, leave us a five-star review and drop a follow because, you know, it's just it's just the right thing to do. Just the right thing to do. Oh, yeah. But thank you guys so much. Now, before we get out of here, I do want to say one more thing. We didn't do Q&A this time because we do have expectations of Q&A videos coming down the pipeline. So if you've given me questions, just hold hold your horses. Hold your horses. <laughs> Because we are going to get to those. We're going to do an extra video, whether it's weekly or bi-weekly. We're not sure yet where we're going to answer the questions that you guys gave. I have over like 30 questions right now from you guys. So thank you so much for participating. But that is coming down the pipeline. But without further ado, have a wonderful night.